Everyone get out! Hello tankers and tankettes, it's review time! I've decided to look at the mouse because it's become one of my new favourites. It's still not quite replaced the KV-4 and the AMX-40 as, as my favourite tanks of the game, but it's a close third on that list. It's quite a specialised vehicle, and it's specialised for a number of reasons that I'll get to. But uh, I, I just want to preface this all by saying the mouse is a tank that I've basically coveted since I started playing the game, and it took me quite a while to get there. I actually... Uh, I went for the, um, the the Russian heavies long before I went for the German heavies, so I ended up with an IS-4 well before I had the mouse, but I've actually had now the mouse as my second tier 10 heavy, and I'm slowly working towards uh, a, a third tier 10, well actually two further tier 10 heavies, so I'm slowly building up my roster of tier 10s, but I, I've taken a long time to get to a lot of uh, the tier 10s, and it's possible to do it in a much, much shorter span of time than I've done it in. But I think for a tank like the mouse, there's not much point in rushing to it, to be honest. Because just because it does require um, a, a certain minimum standard of skill to actually get the best out of it. Because like I said, it's quite a specialised tank. Now, I'm going to do my usual thing. I'm going to split this up into pros and cons. And then I've got uh, two bits of gameplay footage to show you. Because there are two particular things that the mouse is good at. And they are both down to its nature as a very slow but very heavily armoured tank. And that is the defining feature of the mouse. And we'll we'll jump right in with the, the, the pros because that is the big pro of the mouse is its amazing armour. Now we'll jump quickly to the armour model and you can actually take a look. It's um, 240 armour over quite a lot of the front. And... The upper front plate, as you can see, it's um, not totally impervious. It's still pretty damn strong, though. It's going to bounce an awful lot. The lower front plate, as you can see, is comparatively weaker because of the difference in angle. So that's one of the weak spots that you have to try and avoid. Although, when you're angled, which is the big strength of the mouse, that jumps massively so an angled mouse is a really tough target and if you haven't got the hang of angling your tank by the time you get to the mouse you're going to need to be able it's essential it really is you have to the turret also is i mean it's got quite a nice curve it's um that lower curve i haven't had much experience of this myself but i suppose in theory it could act as a, a shot trap so you might have to be careful about that I can think of maybe one or two occasions where that's happened. What this doesn't show is the fact that there are also two weak spots on the turret cheeks. So angling the turret is also actually as important as angling the hull. So holding your turret in line with the tank or even um, putting it at a, an even more extreme angle when you're facing off against enemies to deny enemies the chance to shoot at those turret weak spots, that's actually quite important. I always like to think of the mouse as being the most shy tank because in between firing it goes don't look at me and turns its turret away uh yeah let's just pretend i didn't do that voice um but that is that is absolutely the defining characteristic it's got uh, it, it is possibly one of the best side scrapers in the game and i say that you know being a, a fairly well seasoned kv4 player um that the, the the turret sides are immensely troll. The side armor, when angled, you can see there is um, a lot of the times you can just sit at auto bounce angles. It's got. Um, it is possible to. Uh, yeah, I meant to do that. Damage it and uh, track it at the same time, but it's really difficult to do. Uh, generally, on the whole, what you have to worry about when you're facing people frontally are those two weak spots. So. The other, the other good points, the outstanding points, is that it has the highest hit point pool of any heavy tank in the game. It has 3,000 hit points, which is, um, you know, you might think that that's amazing. And it is amazing. You can afford to take damage that you just couldn't afford to take in a lot of other tanks. But you have got those hit points for a reason, and we'll come to the reason but but it's there and those hit points are there to be used and abused sometimes you really 
have to just make use of that massive hit point pool and just sacrifice some of it. You know, you have to roll forward knowing that you're going to lose a fair chunk of that. And sometimes it, it, it it's a gamble, but it's a gamble that you couldn't really take in any other tank that doesn't have that massive amount of hit points. It's also got... Um, if I can get that the right way, it's got fairly nice gun depression, as you can see. And it's not exactly a, a, a peekaboo tank, but that is a nice feature. And it's um, a peekaboo hull down. I know what I mean. Although you can sort of be peekaboo hull down. Anyway, anyway, moving swiftly on before I confuse myself totally. It's actually quite useful on a, a lot of maps where there's uh, fairly bumpy terrain. You can... Um, expose a, a bit of your tank without exposing too much of the lower front plate. Though, of course, like I've said, those turret weak spots, uh, if people know to shoot there, you still have to angle your turret in between shots, even if you're doing that. But it's just a nice feature, and I think it's one of the, the overlooked things about the mouse, is that it does have actually pretty nice gun depression. And um, the last thing I will mention in... It's not really an outstandingly, outstandingly good feature, but in line with a lot of the other tier 10s, it's got a 400 meter view range. You can buff that with optics if you really want to, which could be really useful in a lot of situations. Um, it's not that that's the actual setup I use in game, but it's um, and I'll also talk about equipment a bit later. But optics is an option if you want to go down that route, but it's not one I would use myself because it, this is this is one of those tanks where there's just two or three, um, if you could mount double the number of, of um, pieces of equipment, that there's a, quite a few that are actually relevant and useful to the mouse, and it's one of these ones where you have to choose quite carefully how you want to set up your mouse exactly. Now, the uh, the downsides, I've already mentioned the, the weak spots, which are entirely possible. There's actually some fairly significant well, I say fairly significant we rear weak spots. A lot of stuff will, you know, if you're sat side on to um, things, uh, the, the hull is actually fairly um, easy to pen. Although these side skirts, you know, these are all um, acting as spaced armor. So it's still a, a fairly big chunk of the hull where people could uh, fire heat shells and hesh. But there's a, a chance that your side skirts will actually eat those so don't discount that but don't rely on it happening because it's you look at it and you think oh that the side skirts are going to be huge but actually they're the sort of less than you might think there's also the rear lower front plate i guess you'd call it. it's fairly weak that's only uh, got 160 although you can see the equivalent is uh, still it depends on the relative angles of people but it's still over 200 Th this is the very weakest spot of armor on the whole tank which is this little plug of 100 millimeter armor which i think i seem to remember from watching the chieftain's video on the mouse when he visited kublinka was actually it was either for uh, ejecting shell casings or for feeding in ammunition. It was for ammunition going in or out either way. The uh, the cost of all this armor is that the mouse is actually pretty damn slow. We'll quickly flick over to the stats screen and you can see there. Now it's got a lot of horsepower. It's 1750. So the, the horsepower per ton ratio it's not brilliant but it's not bad you will actually get around at your maximum speed reasonably fast but your maximum speed is only 20 your reverse speed's actually not that far off your your uh, your going forward speed um there's probably a word for that um <laughs> yeah but um you're not a fast tank and that's something you have to bear in mind um, a lot when you're entering a battle. You have to think quite carefully about where you're going to go on a battlefield and the, um, the the makeup of the enemy team dictates that to a large extent. But if you're platooned with people, that also has a large effect. So that that's an important consideration in the, in the mouse. As with any slow tank, you have to choose where you're going really quickly. Um, the traverse speed is also, uh, you see there, 15 degrees a second. It, it traverses really slowly. One of the very uh, biggest dangers in a mouse is um, getting rushed, basically. And if you're on your own, uh, there's really little you, you can do to defend yourself because your DPM isn't good enough, and your you know if you get swarmed, your armor isn't good enough to save you in that kind of situation. You just uh, you know a lone mouse is 
almost certainly going to be a dead mouse if your enemies are even halfway competent. Sometimes you'll get away with it, but really don't count on that. The gun is probably the feature, uh, I say feature, <laughs> that people most complain about. It's got, with its regular ammo, it's an average of 246 penetration, and it's... Uh, 490 damage. So damage is all right. It's a 12.8 centimeter um, KWK 44L55, which, if we take a quick look at, um, I think it's the same gun that the Yak Panther and the Ferdy get. Um, but yeah, it is exactly the same gun the Yak Panther and the Ferdy get. So this is a tier 8 tank destroyer gun on the mouse. Now you could say it's just that the Yak Panther and the Ferdy get really nice guns, and they do get really nice guns, but the the gun on the mouse is the mouse isn't really about firepower and you can do some damage you know 246 penetration at best can be described as adequate a lot of the time you probably won't have to reach for the premium ammo but you are going to need some because there are some targets um some of the soviet tank destroyers i think the 110e3 um there's a couple where they are incredibly tough targets with regular ammo Unless you can, you know, this is a tank where you're going to be facing off against other heavies, other tank destroyers frontally a lot of the time. The speed of it means you're not really going to be using it as a flanking machine ever, if at all. Um, but if you need to reach for the premium ammo, it's there. It's got 311 penetration average. So it's not like I would say you need lots of it, but you are going to need a certain amount for some targets. But with judicious use, actually, you're going to need less than you would think. You know, 246 for, with the, the regular ammo is actually slightly less than the T-34 gets, which is a tier 8 premium tank, for crying out loud. But um, it's actually workable. It's not as bad as it might seem. I don't have to use a lot myself, but I do occasionally have to. And um, the last major downside, well, it is actually, it does stem from having all that armor. You will quite frequently find that people, having talked about premium ammo, people won't even bother to aim for the weak spots. You know, it might even be that you're hiding your weak spots really well, and somebody then just switches to the premium ammo, and that's You've got to expect that in a lot of situations. Although sometimes you'll get that, that people won't even... You know, they'll be firing at the side of your tank with premium ammo when it's totally unnecessary. Um, especially facing lower tiers, but even facing lower tiers, you know. If you're angled well enough, you actually do stand a decent chance of bouncing even premium ammo. So you'll get... Um, especially since I've started using uh, an indicator that tells me what kind of ammo people are shooting at me. Um, even the lower front plate, if you're at a sufficient angle, you can you can bounce heat shells, you can bounce uh, APCR, and um, it, it, it's not guaranteed. It's much less, you know, the armor becomes much less reliable when you're facing a lot of premium ammo being shot at you. But it's just part and parcel of playing the mouse. You have to expect it, and it can sometimes be frustrating. But it's the same with hev any heavily armored tank. Sometimes people will uh, judiciously use it against you. They'll try a couple of rounds of normal ammo and those bounce and then they switch to the premium ammo and then, okay, fair enough. Um, but other times you'll meet someone that will just be firing premium ammo from the start. They're not even trying to, um, to uh, go for your weak spots. They're not even trying to outplay you. They just reach for the premium ammo. And that, that, that's frustrating in any tank. Um, but I think you encounter it maybe more often in the mouse just because of the nature of the mouse. Now, I will quickly talk about uh, the equipment composition. I think the rammer and the vertical stabilizer are absolutely essential. The the gun, like I've mentioned, the pen was lacklustre. Well, is lacklustre. The rate of fire is also lacklustre. The, the DPM without a gun rammer is pretty poor. Even with a gun rammer, uh, with a gun rammer, there we go, it's nearly 2300. If we take the gun rammer off, it drops to 2057. So it's not good. It, the gun rammer is absolutely essential equipment. You can't get away with that. It's not exactly, I mean, the mouse isn't exactly a primary damage dealer, but uh, with a gun rammer, you're still looking at a 12 point something second reload. So you still have to be able to do some damage. You, you, 
in theory it acts as a damage soak for the enemy team but if you're not doing some damage yourself you know you do need to help out your team a bit the vertical stabilizer i also feel is incredibly important just because uh, 20 percent plus 20 percent accuracy during movement and turret rotation and it's the turret rotation that's the important one here because like i said you're gonna have to angle your turret between shots and because it's you know it's kind of hard to miss when a mouse driver is doing that you need to be able to minimize the time you're waiting for the reticle to close and i think that is the more useful piece of equipment than the gun lane drive in this situation just because you're constantly having to angle the turret and angle it back again as quickly as possible and it's not a particularly fast traversing turret we'll just take another quick look at the stats and i don't think i mentioned the turret traverse before see if i can find it there turret traverse speed 16 so it's only barely better than the uh the hull traverse of uh, 15 degrees per second it's not a fast moving turret so that's why that is particularly useful uh, um, equipment although you might you might want a gun lane drive instead I, I don't know i feel that is the more useful the third equipment slot is like the tricky one because like i mentioned there's a a, a plethora of different options uh, coated optics really useful or you might want to emphasize repair speed you might want a toolbox you might want improved ventilation which gives a buff to uh, a minor buff to all stats I don't think 5% is enough to warrant it unless you've got a crew with brothers in arms then actually brothers in arms plus vents is uh, that does add up to actually uh, uh, quite a significant um, a difference in some of the stats you know it, it's it's worth doing if you've got a brothers brothers in arms crew so maybe you want vents uh, enhanced gun lane drive you might want to speed up that aim time even more although personally I think the vert stabs on their own are enough and um, super heavy spall liner which is actually what I run with on mine now that is a really heavy uh, piece of equipment the super heavy it's um, is it better part of a ton it's like 750 no I, I can't even remember it, it's it's heavy anyway and that actually does have an impact on your horsepower per ton uh, ratio so it makes you marginally more sluggish I don't think it makes that much of a difference on a mouse but the nature of the mouse means that uh, you're going to be dealing, especially on open maps, with a lot of times you're going to be dealing with artillery focusing on you. Because artillery loves a slow, heavily armoured, high hit points target. And at least in the mouse, you know, you're slightly better off than in something like a T95 or a T28. But um, you're seeing, you know, high tier artillery fairly often. A match where you don't have artillery is quite a nice match. A lot of the time with uh, matches with, uh, even if it's only two artillery, you, or even one artillery if it's a tier 10, you kind of know they're going to be targeting you. So you have to get to places where, um, if possible, where you might be artillery safe and be able to minimize your exposure to artillery. But having the spore line that helps a lot because you can, um, well, these days it actually minimizes uh, it gives extra protection to your crew from um, HE splash and that can be quite important and it gives extra uh, protection against um, the uh, actual HE damage as well and when you're facing off against really high tier RT that can be incredibly useful uh, but that is like I would actually quite like to have optics or maybe vents on this but I think the super heavy spore liner is probably more useful than either of those things but if you're willing to take the risk then you can mount one of those bits of equipment but yeah I should have mentioned that in the cons list actually artillery artillery loves a mouse prior to the 8.6 patch uh, artillery changes the um, the mouse was a really rare sight on the battlefield because basically it would just get focused down by artillery and nuked and you didn't see it very often because people didn't enjoy playing it and I think the situation has improved but it can still be painful sometimes that said though I I still do have a lot of fun playing the mouse and um, I think it's uh, you know I never played it in in the old days pre RT nerf so I don't know how bad it was exactly I only have the, uh, the the hearsay the anecdotal evidence I only know what I've heard 
I will do a quick intermission where I um, maybe show you the armour in a bit more detail and point out the actual armour thicknesses and maybe uh, I think I'll mention crew skills as well because crew skills can be quite important on a, a tier 10. Obviously repairs, you know, that goes without saying, but there are some other useful crew skills for the mouse. And then, like I said, we've got two bits of replay to show you where I will talk about the two uh, the two strengths of the mouse, the two things that the mouse does particularly well, the things that set it apart. So, without further ado, on to the interval. <laughs> 